Today, I'm going to talk about prolonged neonatal jaundice. Prolonged neonatal jaundice is defined as visible jaundice, which is the yellowish discoloration of the body, the skin, or the sclera, or serum bilirubin more than 85 micromole per liter or 5 mg per deciliter, that persists beyond 14 days of life in a term baby or 21 days in a preterm baby. Term baby means 37 weeks and more of gestation, whereas preterm baby means 35 to 37 weeks. So the causes of prolonged neonatal jaundice, we can divide it into two groups. The unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia or conjugated hyperbilirubinemia causing neonatal jaundice. For unconjugated, there, the causes include septicemia, urinary tract infection, breast milk jaundice, hypothyroidism, hemolysis, for example, G6PD deficiency or congenital spherocytosis, galactosemia or Gilbert syndrome. Whereas for conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, the causes are biliary tree abnormalities like biliary atresia and cholidocalcis. Other causes of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia is neonatal hepatitis, which can be caused by inborn error of metabolism, galactosemia, or alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and also tortuous infection and metabolic disease. It is important to know the cause, whether it is unconjugated or conjugated, to, um, to decide the management that is suitable for the, for the patient. For physical examination, what we can do is look at the general appearance of the infant, look for the jaundice, the extent of the jaundice, any paler and ill-looking baby might suggest sepsis. You can also look for dysmorphic features like Down syndrome or allergy syndrome that can cause jaundice as well. Down syndrome is because it can predispose to hypothyroidism, which is one of the causes of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia causing jaundice. For vital signs, we can look at the temperature of the baby. If there is fever, it might suggest infection. Or see, look for the heart rate, the pulse rate, and the respiratory rate. If there is tachycardia and tachypnea, it might suggest sepsis. For abdominal examination, you can feel for hepatosplenomegaly, any umbilicus redness or hernia. If there is umbilical hernia, it might suggest hypothyroid where we will need to do thyroid function tests to confirm. We should also check the head and the ear, nose, throat. Look for large fontanelle. And for ENT, can look for any ear discharge that might suggest otitis media or any bulging edematous tympanic membrane on otoscope and also injected pharynx. Because infection may, is one of the causes of neonatal jaundice as well. For investigation, we can do total serum bilirubin with direct indirect bilirubin. This is important to note because we have to know whether it is conjugated or unconjugated. Conjugated is same with direct bilirubin, whereas unconjugated is also known as indirect bilirubin. So total serum bilirubin can be done to see the baseline of the bilirubin level and also to monitor the rate of rise. We can do full blood count to look for if there is anemia, might suggest hemolytic disease, or there is high white cell count, might suggest infection. Third is peripheral blood film. You can look for spherocytes to suggest hereditary spherocytosis, or bite cells and fragmented cells to suggest G6PD deficiency. Fourth is thyroid function test, which I mentioned just now to rule out hypothyroidism. And the fifth investigation is IEM spot test, which means inborn error of metabolism spot test. So to rule out any inborn error of metabolism. And other investigations include G6PD enzyme assay to rule out G6PD deficiency, UFIM to rule out urinary tract infection, liver function test to look for any elevated liver enzymes like ALT and AST, which would might suggest hepatitis, causing conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And the last one is serum GGT, 
the GGT's gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. It can be done especially if the child has pale stool and dark urine, which, where there is suspicion for biliary obstruction. So if the serum GGT is high as well, together with the pale stool and dark urine, it might mean biliary obstruction, for example in cases like biliary atresia. For management of prolonged neonatal jaundice and also neonatal jaundice, we usually give phototherapy and if it is very severe, we can give exchange transfusion. So the management depends on the cause of the prolonged neonatal jaundice, where different causes require different management. That's all for my video. Thank you.